Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at the non-inverting version of the Schmidt trigger. And we're going to perform a similar analysis to what we did for the inverting version. Uh, so we have a very similar circuit configuration where we have the uh, op-amp or comparator uh, and the two resistors R1 and R2, but notice that now the input signal is being applied to the non-inverting input terminal and the inverting input terminal is simply tied to ground. Uh, because the input signal is applied to the non-inverting input terminal, we know that as a general rule, uh, Vout is going to be positive and sitting at a positive saturation voltage. Let's imagine this is an op-amp. Uh, for V in values that are greater than zero or positive, and generally V out will be sitting at negative saturation for V in values that are uh, less than zero or negative. Uh, more specifically, V out will be equal to positive saturation when V plus, which is the, the voltage at the positive input terminal, is positive and negative saturation when V plus is negative. Now we want to figure out the transition point and the transition point is the value of V in that is going to, uh, to, to turn the output voltage from low to high or high to low. And we know it's going to be whatever value of V in causes the V plus voltage to be greater than or, or lower than zero. So we can uh, use in this case, superposition to figure out the value of V plus in terms of V in and V out. We can see that uh, both of those V in and V out have connections to V plus. And uh, if we want to consider the overall contribution, we can use superposition. So we're going to use superposition to find uh, V plus. Uh, again, as a function of V in and V out. So we have the V in contribution. So from V in, let's imagine that we turn off all the other voltages and we only let V in on, uh, then basically V plus will be equal, I'm gonna call this V plus uh, one, will be equal to the result of voltage division, R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in, and the contribution from V out, which I will refer to as V plus two, uh, can be calculated by turning off all other voltages, meaning V in will just be a ground. And so it's also the result of voltage division, but in this case, it will be R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V out. So my overall um, V plus, will be equal to the two contributions, V plus 1 plus V plus 2, or R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in, plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V out. So this is my overall value of V plus. Now let's see what happens, uh, and we're going to take the same approach as we did before. Uh, we're going to look at the two possible states for the output when the output is high, and when the output is low. So we're going to assume initially, uh, assume initially the output is uh, low, so negative V set. If the output uh, is low, we presume the uh, input signal is also going to be low, but the important thing is that V plus is going to be negative. So um, v out less than zero, so that implies that V plus must be less than zero. Um, now we know that V plus is equal to, as we have calculated, R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V out. And now let's imagine that we start increasing our input signal. As we increase our input signal, remember our V out is sitting at negative saturation, so I'm going to replace that value with negative saturation to indicate that's, that's constant. Um, it, and initially V plus is, is negative, which means that the second term is larger in magnitude than the first term, because the second is the negative term. 
But as V increases, then the first term of this, um, uh, of this expression uh, becomes larger and eventually becomes larger than the second term, which is the negative term. And so V plus becomes a positive quantity. And when that happens, then the output is going to switch. And so that transition point is going to occur um, exactly when V plus is equal to zero. For whatever value of V in makes the value of V plus equal to zero. And so we can say transition happens when V plus becomes greater than zero. And at that point, we can calculate the value of V in. And so in the limit, we will have R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in minus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V sat V in equal to zero. Um, and we can basically multiply both sides of the equation times R1 plus R2 and be left with R1 times V in minus R2 times V sat is equal to zero. And the four V in in that case is equal to um, R2 divided by R1 times V sat. And so this is our transition point uh, for V out to come from low to high. If we were to represent it in our voltage transfer characteristic plot, V out versus V in, we will have V out starting at uh, negative saturation, negative V sat, and transitioning to positive saturation at the value equal to VT. And now let's see how it moves in the opposite direction. So now we have uh, V out sitting at positive V sat, uh, which implies that since V out is now greater than zero, we know that V plus is going to be greater than zero. And uh, we want to calculate the value of V in that is going to make V plus go negative. And so in this case, V plus is going to be equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in. And since V out is sitting at plus V sat, now we have plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V sat. And just like we did before, we want to calculate uh, what value of V in is going to make V plus equal to zero. Since the second term is positive, uh, then we know that there's going to be some negative value of V in as V in keeps going lower and lower. Uh, eventually, the first term in that expression is going to become larger in magnitude than the second term, and V plus will go negative. So in the limit, just like we did before, V plus is going to be equal to zero. And uh, so we can equate this expression to zero again. Um, we can use the same approach as before to make those two cancel. And we will have that... Um, R1 V in plus R2 V sat is equal to zero, which implies that V in is equal to negative R2 over R1 times V sat. Or if we compare it to the previous expression, we can see that this is simply the negative value uh, of VT. And so if we were to plot that, we will have that V out starts as a positive value. And it will remain positive until V in reaches a value of negative VT. At which point it will switch. Where VT is equal to R2 over R1 times the saturation voltage. So that's an important uh, expression. Perhaps we can write it a little darker. Vt equals R2 over 1 times V sat. But again, notice that uh, just as in the previous case, we have uh, an amount of hysteresis. Hysteresis. 
uh, which is equal to 2 times Vt, and Vt is again controlled by the ratio of R2 to R1, just like in the previous case.